This is BAM, short for Baikal Amur Mainline, a 4,000 kilometer long railway in eastern Siberia and one of the greatest engineering endeavors of the 20th century. But what's so great about a railway in plain fields and forests, even if it's a long one? Well, Siberia is a unique place, and constructing the infrastructure there can demand a kind of greatness that could never be seen anywhere else. Today, we'll take a tour into two tunnels. The infamous Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland, which currently holds the title of the longest tunnel ever built, and the modest, little-known Severomuski Tunnel of BAM. We'll see what kind of challenges lie ahead with being the greatest of the great in the world, and what occurs just being in Siberia. Put on your hard hats and let's go. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is a 57-kilometer-long railway tunnel that connects the central German-speaking Swiss canton of Yuri with the southern Italian-speaking canton of Ticino, and zooming out on the map, Germany with Italy and its Mediterranean ports. The word base means that it starts right at the foot of St. Gotthard Massif and goes below the entire mountain range, sustaining the weight of the mountains up to 2,500 meters high. People have been crossing the Alps here since the 13th century. The path was difficult, and to reduce the overrun area, they wanted to build a bridge across the gorge of Schurlinen. The engineers of that time were not yet able to complete such an ambitious project, so the devil was contracted, and the bridge received the still extant name of Teufelsbrücke, or Devil's Bridge. When the hour of reckoning came, and the first soul crossing the bridge had to be given to the devil, the people let a goat walk across the bridge. The devil was so furious with this deception that he took a giant rock and threw it at the gorge, destroying the bridge. That rock is still there. In 1977, it even had to be moved during the construction of the Gotthard Highway, which proves the entire devil story to be completely true. Another really old piece of infrastructure on this path is the Unerloch Tunnel, one of the first road tunnels in the world, completed on August 15, 1708, and having survived a number of renovations, is still used for traffic today. To summarize, here on the Gotthard Pass, people have centuries of construction experience, both independent and with the otherworldly forces involved. A completely different situation can be observed 7,000 kilometers away in the very north part of the Republic of Buryatia. This impassable taiga and the unapproachable mountains have never attracted ancient tribes who preferred to live by the shore of Lake Baikal, or Genghis Khan, who made these highlands the northern border of his empire. The Buryats people, ancestors of those glorious Mongols, have never hunted, fished, or put their yurts here. This is truly no man's land, and when an 11-point earthquake happened in 1957, no one was here to measure the impact and claim the damages. It is only known that the entire Udokan mountain range was moved one meter to the east, and a new giant lake was created. People first reached this place only 20 years later, and through these unwelcome and, as it turned out, seismically hazardous mountains, they came to bore a 15-kilometer long tunnel. But why would anyone build a railroad in such a place? For the USSR, and now Russia, BAM is basically a backup for the Trans-Siberian Railway a section of which runs too close to the Chinese border and is vulnerable in case of a war. Up until the early 2000s, BAM was generating huge losses, and many called this railway a road from nowhere to nowhere. The Soviets built it just because they could. Soviet youth were attracted to the romantic idea of developing new lands, following their dreams and the fog and the smell of taiga forest. Such a passionate approach sometimes brings forth its fruits, and now, with the development of the Asian Pacific region countries, the BAM is saturated to its full capacity, transporting coal from huge deposits discovered during its construction to Pacific Ocean ports. The Severomuski Tunnel is a very important stretch of this route. During the 26 years of its construction, each passing train had to be disengaged into very short, lightweight compositions and be slowly and carefully pulled through the dangerous provisional mountain bypass, which can still be seen at the eastern mouth of the tunnel. The Gotthard Base Tunnel, on the other hand, 
was from the very start built with a clear economic and environmental purpose. The people of Switzerland, disturbed by an increasing amount of trucks and international transit through their country, gathered and through the series of referendums, provisioned, those trucks shall be put on trains. 17 years and $12 billion later, after the grand opening in 2016, newspapers wrote that the travel time from Milan to Zurich was now 3 hours and 20 minutes instead of 3 hours and 50. So much expense to save half an hour. 100,000 trains passed through the tunnel in the first two years of its existence, two-thirds of them being heavy cargo trains. Truck traffic jams dissolved, and heavenly alpine meadows became peaceful again. This project was a dream since the late 40s, and the biggest challenge foreseen was going through the so-called Piora Syncline. It is a section of the mountain filled with sugar dolomite, a rock that is more like sugar, which, in the presence of water, basically becomes a flowing powder, almost impossible to tunnel through. A smaller investigation tunnel was bored above the main tunnel level prior to the start of the construction, and one day, when the workers noticed that the temperature of the rock suddenly started falling, they knew cool water was somewhere near. They switched tools and began drilling a very small hole, about 10 centimeters in diameter. And once the drill reached the Piora syncline, 4,000 tons of water mixed with sand gushed out and continued spilling out of control for three hours until the hole was finally clogged. Nobody was hurt, but all the equipment was covered in dolomite dust and locked in a sand trap. The funniest thing is that after drilling more holes, it was discovered that at the main tunnel level, the Piora syncline was waterless for at least 2 million years, and drilling there could have been performed without any issues. A hundred meters separated a mushy suspension of water and sand from stable and drillable rock below it. Would the Gotthard base tunnel be possible at all if they decided to make it even a little bit shorter and a little bit less deep? February 3rd, 2009, the day when the tunnel boring machine successfully cut through the last meters of the Piora syncline, was a day of great celebration for everyone involved. The remote land of Buryatia was studied much less. No one had ever known what had happened inside those ancient mountains, and the first research was only made possible with aerial photography. Before that, a number of brave discoverers were lost in the mountains, eaten by wolves or just disappeared. Those who survived returned back to the Tsar carrying only one message. No, do not build the Trans-Siberian there. Try somewhere else. By the Chinese border, for example. The story says that almost a century later, when Dick Robbins, president and CEO of the Robbins Company and a legend in the tunneling industry, personally came from the USA to see how his company's machine was deployed on the world's most geologically challenging tunnel construction site. He took a little tour of the surrounding mountains and said, This is a very bad rock. You should bore somewhere else. The Soviets didn't listen to him. Within the first 100 meters of the tunnel, the boring technology had to be changed three times. Permafrost adjoined aggressive thermal waters. The mountain ranges were riddled with cracks and filled with quicksand. One of those quicksand areas seemed to be minor from the investigation tunnel, but when the main tunnel reached it, the granite lintel cracked, and giant amounts of water and sand collapsed into the tunnel. The same happened in Gotthard, but here it was 10,000 times worse. A 20-ton truck was pushed for 300 meters, and all 30 workers who were in the tunnel at that time were killed. That deadly stream would never have stopped by itself, and constructors had to pump massive amounts of concrete into the tunnel to close it with a kind of giant concrete plug. This plug could only be broken two years later, after the engineers managed to divert the water streams away from the tunnel path. In the future, all cracks were pre-filled with a specially designed chemical compound that displaced the water and, hardening, turned itself into a rock through which they bored the tunnel itself. But aside from loose rocks, these ancient mountains kept inside themselves another danger, and this time it was invisible. <laughs>